Come on up here, guys. Congrats. All right. <laughs> That's no way you know where to go. Right. Yeah, we'll grab you guys some water. Matt, can you grab some waters, please? Thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and roll into our post race um, for today's NASCAR Cup Series race, the Pennzoil 400, just as they take the green here in the NASCAR Xfinity <laughs> Series race. Uh, we're joined now by our race winner, Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Pennzoil Ford, and his race winning crew chief, Paul Wolf. So we'll quickly get to questions. If you have one, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we'll start here in the back. Davey Siegel with Front Stretch. Congratulations, guys. This could go for either of you, but was it ultimately a miscommunication on the radio that may have uh, led to you winning this race? Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, you know, we, we were we talked about the scenario, um, whether it's at the end of a stage or end of the race, um, at some point. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, if it comes down to the, can we get clean air? Um, you know, and at what point are we comfortable staying out? Um, you know, so. Uh, Paul came over the radio and said, stick to the plan. I said, okay, I stick to the plan. <laughs> That's the, that was it. So, um, you know, ultimately it was a good, it was a good call, obviously, and um, get, got us uh, in position to, to uh, have a good restart. I had a good push for, with Ricky behind me and had a good block on the 24 once I got the push. Um, you know, and at that point, uh, once you get that clean air, you're in good shape. If I didn't have a good restart and got swallowed up by the field, I'd have been – you know, had the backup lights on pretty quick, but um, you know, the the call and then the execution to go together is what we need to do. All right, Chase, go ahead. Chase Willem, NASCAR.com. This one's for Paul. Um, on on Friday, Joe was talking about how he's just letting you do your thing as as being the new crew chief for him. Um, so, how much easier is does that make your job knowing that he has the confidence to let you just do your thing right now? Um, I don't know if it makes it any easier. It's pretty hard at this level um, to win races. So um, put a lot of pressure on myself. Obviously, it's good to have um, the confidence in the driver. Um, he believes in his team and what we can do. Obviously, we've both been successful um, prior to this year. And um, we have certain things that's helped us get to where we're at, things that have worked for us in the past. So um, kind of like call it your comfort zone, if you will. Um, but what we've really tried to do in the off season is communicate a lot and try to understand, you know, kind of the strengths and weaknesses of, of each of our programs in the past maybe, and just try to mesh it all together and just make, make ourselves stronger and uh, win more races than we have with our, with our teams prior. And um, obviously it's early. Um, this was kind of the first test. I mean, obviously speed weeks is, kind of its own deal. Um, we had good cars, and I thought it all went fairly smooth. Obviously, we didn't get the results we were hoping for. Um, but I knew coming out on the West Coast swing was really going to be where we're going to learn and try to understand what we need to do. Um, I thought practice went well on Friday. Um, wasn't quite as pleased, obviously, with how the car was in the race. I thought we'd be a little stronger. Um, we, we fought through it all day. Obviously, Joey did a great job keeping, keeping us up front, keeping our track position, and Obviously, in these races, that's what it com comes down to. If you keep yourself in the top five, you've put yourself in position, uh, depending on what happens, how it plays out. You know, I've, I've lost plenty of them being the best car. And, um, so it just kind of all goes in full circle. And um, he, he drove a great race. And, you know, we kind of had a plan, like he said, um, coming into the race. Um, like him, I try to communicate with him thoughts and get his ideas. And then um, kind of have a plan. Sometimes you got to change and adapt. Um, but he stuck to what we had talked about, and uh, obviously it paid off. All right, Lee, up here, up front. Thank you. Okay. Paul, what, what led to the decision to keep him on the racetrack? Because, you know, clearly Blaney's in the lead, and you're either going to follow the leader or you're going to do your own thing and, and put yourself in position to win. It's really about the clean air. Um, if you can get clean air, it's worth so much. Um, the tires obviously were wearing some. Obviously, that's why we saw a lot of guys pit, obviously, from the lead. Seemed like it was the left side wear was more accelerated than what we've seen in the past, and I think that was making guys favor wanting tires. 
but really still the fall off, if you look at the start of a run to the end, it, it wasn't extreme. Um, and we, in practice, we were out there on older tires uh, when they have a chance to cool down and seem to refire and have decent speed. So it's kind of kind of what we had talked about. If, if you can get to the front row and get the clean air, then it's worth the gamble. Obviously, we had a lot of cars behind us. At that point, I felt pretty good as long as he executed the restart. The guys on tires weren't going to catch you in two laps, just not enough time. And, and Joey, when did you realize the chaos was breaking out behind you? I mean, you know, at what point did you, you know, kind of know it was the last restart? Yeah. How did you, when did you know it was like smooth sailing for you to the finish? Um, I guess you never really know it's smooth sailing, but, um, you know, obviously as a, as a race car driver and you're in a lead, you, you're in the mirror more and you're looking forward, um, you know, and, and obviously the most intense moments were getting through the gears and trying to clear uh, each lane, um, try to gain control of the race that way, um, which we were able to do through turn one. Uh, I saw Matt uh, make a great move uh, to go three wide bottom, um, which got him to second which was good, but it also even better for me <laughs> because it built some distance uh, between the, the, the second rows as there were three wide back there just dragging each other down. Um, I was able to set sail a little bit and get a little bit of distance. Um, yeah, you know, I'd say probably taking the white because uh, that's, that's probably, you know, you know if they crash at that point, you know, as long as you take the white, you're, you're good. Um, and, you know, with the lead we had uh, taking the white, I felt like um, no matter what run they can build through one and two, it's not going to be enough to make a move in three and four. Um, so I felt confident at that point that we were in good shape uh, to, to have a solid finish and, and win this thing. And, and then the caution came out anyway. So um, I, I don't think it would have changed the outcome of, of at least winning. But obviously, I don't know what I haven't seen replays. But, you know, you look in the mirror and there looks like there's six wide back there, <laughs> especially coming through this front trial or dog leg, whatever you guys call it these days, um, how wide it is. It just seems like there's cars everywhere back there. It's nuts. All right, we're going to go to Bob and then take a look. Uh, Bob Hawker, Fox Sports. I have a couple for Joey. Do you, do you notice any difference in the Chevrolets with their new body and how they ran? Um, well, they ran pretty good. Uh, you know, Paul and I were talking before the, before the race uh, after practice that this didn't really feel like there's a dominant car. Um, you know, the 9 was good, the 4 was good, the 12 was good, the 19 was good, um, but no one was ever, like, the dominant car that's going to go out there and just lead a ton of laps. Um, There's different points of the runs where other cars were better back and forth. Um, you know, so uh, I felt like we were in the hunt, and as long as we were in the hunt, we can, we can try to fabricate something and get there, uh, which is, ended up happening. But, um, yeah, the 9 was good, 24 was good, 48 was decent as well. Um, 88 was, was good and almost won the thing there towards the end of the race as well. So um, I, I would say the, the Hendrick cars were fast today. Um, 42 was decent, but it seemed like the Hendrick cars were, were a little bit ahead uh, from that standpoint. And uh, the, all the Penske cars, before the last caution we're running I want to say either top five or top ten uh, so can you say that the crew chief changes all worked or and it's all was the right move or how long does it take to kind of evaluate all those changes I think one one race is a sample size is kind of tough uh, but you know this has been I think for team Penske our best racetrack here in the recent years um, so not a surprise to see uh, you know, all those cars up front. Um, you think about it, Blaney's led a ton of laps here and has been close to winning here for quite some time. Um, you know, I've, I've won before with, with the team I had it, and I've seen Brad win a lot with Paul before here as well. Um, so it's just been a good racetrack for Team Penske. So um, everyone running fast again, not much of a surprise to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, I, I think we made the move because we think there's a lot. To, to gain from it. And, you know, that's the reason why you do it um, as, as Team Penske as a whole, not just one particular car. Um, you know, and I think time will tell, but it's a good start. Bob, did you have another question? I did. Um, you mentioned Blaney. I'm, I'm sure you don't, I mean, you're happy that you won, but it would have been a really emotional win, I would think, if he had won. What do you think today and running up front and leading laps will do at all for his psyche after last week? I mean, I've talked with him. He's, he seems to be okay. Um, you know, I, I think Ryan Newman uh, walking out of the hospital is 
you know, uh, obviously the best thing that could have been for, for, the bol for both Ryans <laughs> at that point. Um, you know, so like I said before, Blaney didn't do anything wrong last week. You know, he, he was trying to win the race and, and you know, a, a bump uh, ended up sending uh, Ryan for a hell ride. And, um, you know, so just the, and that's why I talked to Ryan last week. I said, it's not anything he can do. It's just a position that our sport puts us in sometimes. And, you know, everyone's racing for the biggest race of the year. I, I mean, I, I think everyone would get that and understand that. Um, you know, so I, I think obviously that's a hard spot. And no matter what, however you look at it, it's a hard spot to be put in. Um, you know, thinking that way and you're going to relive it in your mind over and over again, no matter who you are and how mentally strong you think you are, you can't help but think about the well-being of somebody, especially, um, you know, if you're involved in it one way or another. Um, so I think the fact that Newman walked out of the hospital uh, with his kids on each side, uh, well, that doesn't put a smile on the whole garage's face, no, nothing does. All right, Gluck, go ahead. Jeff Gluck from The Athletic. So, you, you know, you're, Joe, you are talking to Bob about the cars that you would thought would be good, and Truex was the only Toyota you mentioned. I mean, I. Personally, I was surprised um, to not see them, any of them, in t finish in the top 10 today. But uh, it doesn't sound like they were really good the whole weekend. Were, were you surprised that typically at a track that they're OK at, that they weren't as strong? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, I, I would say that in practice, it kind of looked like uh, they weren't as quick as, as um, you know, we would expect. Um, you know, but we also kind of thought the 19 was pretty good in practice too. So uh, I, I would say there's no surprise from practice to the race on, on where things are at. But you know, there's still so many decisions we have to make uh, when you, when you come to these racetracks for you know whether you want speed or handling and, and, or something in the middle. And you know, it's it's pretty obvious on the direction that that teams choose and what works and what doesn't. <laughs> it's crazy to to watch it. And the the craziest part to me is they all run good. You know, just different points of the run. All right, real quick. Any additional questions for Paul? Right, do you have a question for Paul or Joey? Well, either one can answer. That's fine. Okay, I'll tell you what. Paul, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you. So you can go ahead and start. Okay, go ahead. It'll be Joey. That's fine. Just tell me how you feel your best or me hear my best because you. Yeah. Over here. Hi, Joey. Tom Zaleski, Iron County today. Um, last year, you the uh, team Penske was one two. You've won two in a row. You've won two in a row here now yourself. What from last year did you learn to help you prepare for this weekend? Oh, how will you learn something new every time you hit the racetrack? Um, I can't tell you what I learned. That would be not smart. <laughs> There's a lot of people listening to this right now. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I study this stuff as, as much as I can, trying to understand runs and what I need in the car and, um, you know, what, what the racetrack's going to do, uh, how the rubber's going to affect the, the track, um, you know, all, all this, this stuff. And, and as a race car driver, that's my job. Um, so I'm going to take as much info as I can from my own experiences and try to learn from other people's mistakes as well or, or, and also the things they did well and uh, try to apply that. So um, there was a few moves that, uh, that I, I was able to do today that was new for me, um, but that worked because I've learned from others. <laughs> um, so it, you know, ultimately, um, you just got to be a student in sport and never stop learning. You know, as many years as you are in this, there's always somebody uh, trying to push you and, uh, and get ahead of you. So um, you know, I was able to try some new things, and it worked out today. How much does Paul push me? Right. Uh, I think we, we, we do a pretty good job of pushing each other so far. Um, you know, uh, I, I love about Paul is he's very competitive. Uh, so am I. Um, he wants to win really bad. And um, I, I can t see his frustration if, if we don't win. Um, you know, you, you hear him up here a minute ago, you know, we won the race and that's great. but. We're also looking at areas of our car where it was weak. Um, there was obviously plenty of strengths to our car. Don't get me wrong. There's plenty of strengths. That's why we won the race. But there's always a weakness that we can make better. And uh, I know that's on the forefront of both of our minds when we get on the airplane home tonight. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're not going to be talking much about the, the win, um, maybe some. And obviously, we'll, we should enjoy it. Um, it's important. Um, but 
it's equally as important right now to to figure out how we can be stronger um, early in the season right now. Additional questions? Go ahead. Dominic going with the Racing Experts. Last year, you tied Terry Labonte on the all-time wins list when you won here. Now this year, you've passed Ricky Rudd on the all-time wins list with your win today. Just get your thoughts on passing another driver and being 35th. Oh, I didn't know that. That's um, that's cool. Ricky Rudd is uh, – yeah, how are you not a fan of Ricky Rudd? Uh, yeah, I was a fan of him growing up and um, met him a few times, which is cool. Uh, you know, but he's a hard-nosed racer is what he was and, uh, and, and, and really fun to watch. So, um, you know, honored to, to say that I can be somewhere close to him. <laughs> you know, I've always looked at him as, as a great uh, racer and, and um, you know, a Hall of Famer in the future at some point, I'm sure. So uh, proud to, to, to say that i um, able to grab some wins and, and honored to do that. You know, to me, that, that stuff's still really cool to me because – I'm, I'm a race fan of heart, um, and I remember as a kid watching those guys race, never thinking that, you know, you'd get more wins than one of those guys someday um, or even be able to compete, you know, um, it's with some of them on the same racetrack. Uh, you know, when you think of Jeff Gordon and, um, you know, Jimmy Johnson and, you know, Tony Stewart, those guys that, that raced for a long time that I got to race against, that was super cool, um, you know, because I watched them as a kid. Uh, so as a fan, that's the neatest thing in the world. Billy, we had a question over here. Mark Anthony DeBello, DeBello Production Company. Joey, uh, congratulations. Um, Long-term question. Uh, there's talk out there uh, about a 10-year plan NASCAR of NASCAR November. Um, Charlotte for the Hall of Fame here because it's obviously the gambling capital. And congratulations, you were five to one to win this race. Okay. And the final race, uh, a week championship series in Daytona with the um, cool part being that the championship, the cup winner, gets to uh, be the pole sitter for the race in February, Daytona 500. Your thoughts about um, that in the long term? That's all news to me. Whoa. <laughs> Has anyone else heard this rumor before? Is that news to everybody? Well, I, I believe some of that might be a conspiracy theory. I don't, I don't, I'm not buying all that. There's, there's some of that that I don't know if I would uh, be all in for. But, uh, you know, I, I think, obviously, when you think of next gen coming up, uh, with the cars, um, you know, obviously I can't think of what happens 10 years down the road from now, but, you know, I think next year um, there's going to be a lot of change in our sport. Um, you know, whether what happens to the schedule, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to race where they tell me to race because I love racing in this series and, uh, and racing stock cars and racing against the best of the world. Um, I love that part of it. So I don't care um, where we race. I just want to, I just want to drive. Um, and I enjoy that part of it. So, uh, like I said, a lot of gains with, with this next car, next next gen car coming up next season. Um, you know, as someone that's driven it uh, over the off season in Phoenix, was uh, you know impressed with it. Um, obviously, a lot of work to do to it still, but I think overall it's going to be great for the sport, um, for all in included. You know, I think the racing is going to be better. I think it's going to be better for the race teams. Um, I think the fans are going to make out great about it too. All right, Lee, did you have an additional question? Okay, we'll take one last question from Lee. SpencerRacingVoice.com. Um, going looking at Fontana, you've had five finishes of seventh or better, including four straight top fives. Um, how do you think this car is going to react there? Um, it was so racy today. I know that's a different track, but um, if, if it's anything like it was today, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, um, that's exactly what you're going to have. Um, it's, you know, Auto Club Speedway has been a great, a great racetrack for for me in the past. Yet to get a win. <laughs> that's, the, that's the part that stinks. Uh, there's a big goose egg in the win column over there. So got to try to uh, get to the other side of that. But, um, yeah, Vegas, um, you know, Fontana, Kansas, um, Chicago, the tracks that are wide uh, are perfect for this 550 rules package. Um, really, really puts on good racing because when you get to the corner, there's room to get away from the car in front of you to get clean air. Uh, and then you have these long straightaways where the draft really can kick in and you can carry the momentum and make moves uh, into the corners. So, um, yeah, you're going to have some cars on the bottom. You're going to have later in the run cars right up next to the wall. Kyle Larson. Uh, so there'll be, there'll be a few of those uh, back and forth. And um, being able to move around will be key. Uh, but great racetrack. You got bumps. You got tire wear. You have huge straightaways. And you can move wherever you want. It's a great track. 
All right. Well, Joey, congratulations. Thanks for joining, spending some time with us. We wish you the best of luck next weekend. All right. Thank you, guys. Safe travels.